What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? Listen, I literally, I don't know, no, because I work Monday through Saturday. A bitch use Sunday to sleep. And for some reason today, I just, I, this is my first time being up, up, okay? Just in time to do this review, and then I'm taking my ass. Listen, look, look at my head. I just took my do-rag off, okay? Girl, I'm finna take my ass back to sleep. I am so tired. Then I gotta go to work tomorrow. But anyway, <clears throat> sleep is precious when you a goddamn adult, okay? But anyway, so Real Housewives of Potomac. It starts off where it left off last week with Ashley and Candace going back and forth. You know, Ashley, um, as a woman, you don't respect me as a woman or whatever. How can you say that? I just had a miscarriage and all this stuff. And they're going back and forth. And you ain't being a friend. And, you know, Candace calling Ashley out saying you only want to be friends of convenience. And I asked you to be my friend one time. She was like, one time, one time. She was like, girl, it's about reciprocation, okay? And then you have Giselle trying to calm herself down. And everybody else just sitting there looking like this is crazy. But then Giselle went on ahead and kicked everybody out the, house, out the room. So the next day, you got Karen coming downstairs talking to Giselle. They're doing little little fake ass pleasantries and thinking everything is okay because Giselle is like, you know, at this point, I don't get nowhere with questioning her. So I'm gonna just let it go, you know, because she was asking how things were and you know, um, Karen was saying how she's okay. She needed that time. She grieved with uh, well to talk to Ray and all that. And I honestly, just because once again, I'll say this again, just because. Karen is an old bitch, okay? Karen are probably older than all of y'all. And at this point, she is dealing with a lot. And just because she wanted to stay upstairs and get on Instagram Live or whatever, that don't mean that she's not grieving, okay? Everybody grieves um, differently. And, you know, maybe that's what she just wanted to interact with her fans or whatever. That's it. So, ain't nothing wrong with that. I didn't see nothing wrong with that. I didn't see no different motive or her lying about not wanting to be out. I can go and say, I don't want to be out with you motherfuckers. And I get on Instagram Live and I still don't want to be out with you motherfuckers. Okay? That's what it is. You know, I don't have to get out. <laughs> I would be chilling in the, um, in the restaurant, in, in, in the hotel or whatever, or in my crib. But anyway, so at this point, everybody else started coming down. Um, you got just Robin and uh, Monique coming down as well. And Ashley. Not Ashley, but Candace. So what's going to happen is the girls are going to split up into threes, or I believe. Well, Candace and Ashley, um, Candace and Giselle, they're going to meet her father. I think she said something about meeting the mayor or something like that. At some restaurant or something, Dudo or something, whatever. Uh, Ashley and Katie, they're going to do tarot card readings, and then Karen and Monique and Robin, they're going on an alligator um, swamp tour or whatever. And so when they get in the car, um, Karen asks him what did she miss and everything, and they tell her. And Monique said it was Giselle that brought up the whole conversation about, you know, um, Candace, no, oh, Candace saying that Ashley may not be pregnant or don't want to have kids. And I could have sworn it was Katie who said that. Am I am I tripping? Wasn't it Katie who said that? Cause so now it was like Karen thinking that Giselle is stirring the pot, and then you got Monique, and I was like, no, Katie did say that. Katie, the one that said that she was laying on the couch, and she was like, did you got Candace to think that you won't want it? Listen, let me tell y'all something. In the next few videos that y'all see, okay, um, well, I'll explain it to you later, later, cause it don't it don't make no sense right now. But anyway, yeah. So she did that, and I was just like, you know, Giselle was trying to break that shit up, actually, this time. Or maybe um, she did say something, and I missed it. I don't know. But basically, you know, Monique was not in agreement with Candace. Even though she was cool with Candace, she's not in agreement, uh, in agreement, agreement with Karen, um, Candace and what she said. You know, because it's like... You're being Ashley in reverse. You're doing the same thing that Ashley did, telling, dictating about how somebody can be pregnant if they're drinking and all this stuff, and you're not trying to get pregnant if you're doing this and if you're doing that, you know. And in the car, Giselle was trying to tell um, Candace, you have to respect people's boundaries. When you get drunk, you're going over boundaries and stuff. You're putting your hands in people's faces. Both Candace and Ashley was doing that, putting their hands in each other's faces. And, you know, she said, well, I'm a little dog with a lot of bite, uh, a lot of bark, you know. And I'm not just the type of person that's not going to sit back, you know, I'm going to actually do it. You know what I'm saying? So, whatever. Um, and 
I was just like, okay, girl, if that's what you feel, that's what you feel. You got Katie going to, um, Katie and Ashley taking pictures outside, and they're going to see some tarot card reading. And, you know, um, Kate, Ash, Candace, Ashley said, I got to get these bitches' names right. Ashley said that, you know, the last time she came to New Orleans and she got a tarot card reading, it turned out to be true. And so, therefore, she's trying to see what's going on. And I was like, girl, I don't play with that. I don't play with those. But, all right, to each his own. So, the name of the restaurant is Dookie Chase. And I'm like, why does this sound familiar? Um, the owner and the chef of the restaurant, who was actually on the show, Leah Chase, she just passed away. And, you know, she was very prominent in the civil rights, um, you know, activities uh, era. And, you know, uh, had a very popular restaurant. That was a very popular restaurant down in New Orleans. So, may she rest in peace. Um, I remember seeing bon um, Bonnie Blue. She put some stuff up there about her. And I was like, wow, you know, because I've seen her before. But um, it just connect. You know, so uh, Giselle and Candace going to see her dad. And they talking with the mayor. And the reason why Giselle brought um, Candace with her because she also has a political background. You know, Candace did some things with the Obama administration. Giselle did some things with um, the Clinton or whatever. Well, we saw the picture with her and Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, and her dad is in politics as well as, um, you know, the activism and stuff like that. The mayor comes down, you know, and they were just talking and wrapping up and shooting the shits. And it was a really nice moment, um, with Katie and, um, Ashley, they were out at the tarot card reading and he pulled in the cards and he was like, you know, you got one of my old shit cards and she's asking if she's pregnant and when she's going to become pregnant, you know, he was saying you putting too much pressure on yourself trying to become a mother. He do see her being pregnant within a year or so, you know, they go get some tassels for their titties and all that stuff and they was just having fun. And then um, the other girls, they're on the boat. And playing with the alligators and Karen being scary and all that. And that's basically that was going on. So everybody's getting ready. You know, um, Giselle trying to make it so that everybody's on time. And of course, with these girls, it's always at least one or two that's not on time. Surprisingly, Robin was on time. She was on the bus. Everybody all up in white. Um, we got Karen, Ashley, no, Karen, yeah, Karen, Ashley, Gis Giselle is on the bus with her father. He was downstairs already. He was looking sharp. I said, all right, daddy, you better do that, you know? And then you got, um, like I said, Candace, Ashley, Karen, not Karen, but Robin and Monique, they're on the bus. They're waiting to go. Um, while they was on the bus, uh, Ashley do says that, you know, she's apologizing to Monique for, you know, not taking in consideration and being more there for her when she had her miscarriage. And, you know, Monique accepted the apology and she said it wasn't the fact that she wanted an apology or needed an apology. She just wanted her to acknowledge it and to understand. And that's exactly what happened. So she good, you know. And so they waiting for Katie and Karen. Katie then pulled out this raggedy ass wig. I said, girl, no, that ain't it. That ain't it. She was trying to put something on top of it. I said, girl, no, that ain't it. That ain't it and so she i'm glad she switched it up okay and um karen came up there to get her them two had to get an uber to get to where they was going um giselle had a second line dance um band out there for her daddy it was really nice i cannot wait to go to new orleans because i have to experience that but um new orleans just filled with so much culture it's just such a beautiful place if you ask me i ain't never been but from what i've seen it's just beautiful all all around like it's so unique and, um, you know, they had a little second line. Everybody comes up there. You know, they go into the restaurant. We get to introduce um, some more of Giselle's family and friends or whatever. And um, the history of it. And, you know, Karen and Katie show up late, but they get there. And everybody is just having a beautiful time. And then while they sit down there about to eat, um, you have Candace who comes out and apologizes to Ashley about what happened and what she said. And she said she would like to be there during the process of her trying to, you know, get pregnant or whatever. And she was like, you know, I accept your apology, but we're going to have to, uh, it's going to take some time. That ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to happen right about now. I'm not mad at her for saying that. Cause girl, you came at my throat, even though you kind of, you know, did the same thing to Monique. So, Hey, it is what it is.
So basically, you know, Ashley, like, she needs time to develop that. It is what it is. You know, she's much of a loner and all that stuff. Candace not buying it. She goes and tells Karen that, you know, she feel like Ashley is full of bullshit. She says a lot of stuff and do things that contradict one another. Of course, Karen has to go over there and tell, you know, the group what happened, Monique and all that stuff. And, you know, they're sitting there talking about it. Candace comes over. Ashley comes over. They're just discussing the whole thing. And once again, Ashley was like, you're being a, you, you, you apologize to me and then you take it back and you doing the same thing. She was like, no, I apologize for being aggressive. That's what I apologize for. And everything else that I said, I meant. And I appreciate Candace for saying that that's what it was. But at the same time, this ain't the time nor the place to be doing this shit. Okay. Y'all up here getting all loud and ignorant in front of these people that you don't know at a party that's not for you. Okay. And so, Giselle tried to calm it down. Monique was like, don't you, uh, we all experience loss. Most of us at this table have experienced loss, including Ashley. And don't you think that, yeah, she has judged people unfairly in the past. But don't you think that that could probably change her and we shouldn't be coming to her so harshly? I said, oh, Monique, you're good because I wouldn't say shit. But, you know, Candace was like, it is what it is. I still have my opinion. And they was like, okay, cool. You know, bitch, when Ashley said, I don't want you wasting up all your air to sing on me. <laughs> That did make me laugh or whatever. But they was being trifling. They was being trifling. Karen didn't have to open up her mouth and um, say anything. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, They went on ahead and Giselle, you know, she gave a speech. They, oh, yeah, Giselle's ex-boyfriend was there. And they trying to figure out what happened and what went on. She's like, somebody told her something and she just went with it and it wasn't really true. And that's just how she is. They dated for like a year or so. And um, here go Karen. We notice a pattern that um, she does this. It's like after the year point, you know, she um, breaks it off and we're trying to get her out of that. Karen, that wasn't your place to put that out there, okay? You ain't have to put that out there. But, you know, y'all doing this tit for tat shit, so, hey, it is what it is. And so, at this point, um, what was going on was, you know... Giselle gets up there, she do a, a little toast to her dad, and then her dad do his little toast, and, you know, they come out there with the cake and had Candace singing Happy Birthday, and I had literally fast forward that part, because, girl, Candace, Candace can't sing to me, so there you go. So, all the ladies go back to the hotel, they're tired, um... Giselle, on the other hand, she had stayed out three hours later, okay? So, they get ready. They going on the steamboat. Katie, you know, she just knocked out for the count, so she didn't go. Um, they get on the steamboat. Um, Giselle wind up telling them about the fact that she went with Steve. Um, they had drinks on the second floor that he didn't really want to leave. He kissed her on the lips and all this stuff. And, you know, she then goes in and said, you know, um, this one is pregnant. This one is this. And this one is grieving. And the way that she said grieving, talking to, um, Karen, it do it didn't sit well with Karen. So Karen calls her out on it and all that. Then, um... <clears throat> Karen brings up um Sherman. What's the status of your relationship? Are y'all together? You're not together? Whatever. So at this point, Sherman is a sore spot for Giselle, just like grieving is a sore spot for um Karen. And so they're going back and forth. Giselle, like, she got one more time to bring it up, okay? One more time. I said, Ugh, hit up the blow up finna happen. It's bound to happen. Y'all just need to take a break. Take a break from each other, okay? Because y'all not ready. Y'all not ready to be cool. It's too much water under the bridge. It's too, well, it's too much water that's trying to break that bridge, bitch. It's over, all right? And it ain't receded yet, okay? It's it's just a lot that's going on, and y'all ain't really ready to fully grasp the fact that um, people fucked up and they can't hold themselves accountable for their actions just yet. So, everybody get ready to go to, I think, Cafe Du Monde, if that's what it's called. You know, it's it's popular. I always see people going there for the beignets. That's when they talk about beignets down in New Orleans. That's the one that always pops up. But, um, you know, Monique, she stay on the bus. Um, she's tired. She says as soon as she gets to New Orleans, I mean, get home, um, some of her family probably going to be coming in at the same time because she still got to do the little rainbow party or whatever. And she got to deal with the fact that this is her mother-in-law's first time coming to her home ever. Okay, the new home. And then um, Katie met them at the uh, restaurant. They sat down there having a good time. And, you know, they started talking about how Steve felt that Katie was weird, was asking him about the design of his shirt, looking at his collar and all that stuff. And, you know, they laughed at it. And... 
um, Robin was like, you know, since you've been out with Steve and since Sherman, do you feel a little bit more open and free to go out now or whatever? She didn't really want to talk about Sherman. Then Karen was like, um, you know, this is the first time I've seen you smile since Sherman or whatever. And, or, you know, Robin was like, you haven't really been around him to say that. And she asked, you know, so um, what's going on with you and Sherman? I thought y'all was going to counseling because Giselle said it's over. It's dead. It's done. Okay. And she was like, I'm not talking about Sherman. I told you boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. And they did flash back to when she was at Giselle was at uh, Karen house and Karen was told, you know, the boundaries is that, you know, she's not going to talk about Sherman. So she knew and she just kept on bringing it up and bringing it up. Now, as much as I don't like Giselle, most times I was on her side on this. If you tell me something about boundaries, then I got to respect that. You got to respect it too. Okay. Even though I felt like Karen was just throwing it back at Giselle, what Giselle be doing, but still Karen was doing a lot. Keep on bringing up um, Sherman and Sherman and Sherman and Sherman. Why do you care? She said that it's over. It's done with. Let it go. Move on. Okay. Um, she said, I'm not about to talk to you about him because you are friends with his ex-wife. Respect that and move on. You want her to respect you? Start respecting her as well. You know, you gotta, this, this, it's, it's a give and take, give and take. Okay. We got to do the same thing. We can't just have one for one, um, one standard for one person and a different standard for another. No. Okay. And I just didn't appreciate that whole thing. And then when Karen stopped talking and then she came back and she was just cussing her out and all that shit, that's some repressed ass anger that you still pissed off at Giselle over and you was just waiting for the moment to cuss her out. That's what I feel like. Because at that moment I was with Robin, the cursing and all that shit was unnecessary. But anyway, that was it y'all tell me how y'all felt about the episode and i will see you guys later peace